All right, Bloody Barnabas is back. As they say, good sequels always come in pairs. I'm feeling good about this one. How are you? That's great. Let's talk about some atmosphere and basing. Got a lot to get through, so let's slide on into it. First of all, I got my juices flowing with some sketches. This is a nice, no pressure situation where you can just kind of find your forms. You know, I instead of just diving into the deep end, I think it's wise to do a little bit of practicing in the shallow end. Just kind of finding my shapes, deciding exactly how I wanted my trees to look, etc. Just a little bit of uh, sketching to get familiar. Sketchy activity complete. Before I get in there, I have some uh, housekeeping to do. This big dumb tree in front of the backdrop. It looks cool. It's, it's not dumb. I'm sure it's a really smart tree. I'm sorry I, I said that about the tree, but I want to get onto the backdrop. I'm sure I'll have some touching up to do, but the idea is to only paint on top of those trees instead of behind them. So first off, I'm laying down a liberal coat of magnolia brown mixed with thunderstorm. If you remember from part one, this is the same combination I used to shade Barnabas. With that locked down and secured, a coat of magnolia brown, just the purest magnolia brown. Remember to leave some shadows facing away from the scene. Back and to the left. Back and to the left. Moving right along though, I added some goblin green to my bowl of magnolia brown. Just a quick kick up and it was looking suitably swamped. Man, I'm just slowly sliding into cooking terms to this video, so let's, let's just lean into that, as they say. I've got a good soup going now. A pinch of skeletal bone to lift and a targeted highlight. Don't douse it, just go nice and easy with many thin layers. We're adding some dimension. I don't want to soak these trees. I want them to look overall very dark and deep so they fall into the rear of the scene. But yeah, it's going to need a little bit of a touch. I guess I'm just kind of accenting the natural bend in the trees as those branches swoop over, kind of taking a cue from that back and to the left. Light source, I want some up and from the right highlighting in the tree. And I'm also going to throw that mix down on the backdrop to get my main color established. Why not save time? For that last lift up, I combined Skeletal Horde with Stormwolf for a cold, desaturated highlight. I want to keep a cool, foggy feeling on this one, and again, if you remember from part one, which I, I hope you did watch, a lot of icy blues were used to bring up Barnabas, so the story is the same. To seal it all in, I threw some military shader in the airbrush and had some fun. Leaving the brighter areas alone as well as I can, and pulling some mid-tone onto the shadow textures. A little bit of overlapping going on here, but yeah spraying a wash or a speed paint through the airbrush is, is good for this. Transparency is your friend. So with the tree out of the way, let us get on to the main course. Let's build this in stages. Back to front, light to dark. As the swamp trails off, it is consumed in the atmospheric haze, like looking across the horizon. I've given myself some colors to mix from, underbelly blue, dark blue pale, buff, thornwood green, auric olive, black, and ice yellow. I'll mix up some of the lighter distant colors first. Mixing ice yellow and underbelly blue, I'll make a mix of thornwood green and auric olive to mix the trees in that back row. Now getting that distant glow in place, and a very sketchy river, this will be hemmed up later. For now though, light and sketchy is the ticket. Hmm. Things change as you work, the back and forth nature of painting, and I'm seeing as the river trails off back below the trees, I want to get that in place with a mix of auric olive and dark blue pale. I'll wet blend thornwood green and black near the shore. Lovely. Adding my auric olive and thornwood mix to the underbelly blue, this will make the first and most distant layer. Simple, scratchy silhouettes are all that is needed. Keep it nice and even. Nice, though. I think this might work. I'll add more ice yellow and underbelly blue mixtures to the river and gradually add dark blue pale to the mix as I approach the foreground. Things are going to get a little darker as they come towards the main scene. Stepping closer to Gator Wizard Beach. Too many syllables. 
I've added auric olive, thornwood, and dark blue pale together, leaving the underbelly blue out to create a more heavy mid background. Very techy stuff. Now, adding black to that previous mix, you guessed it, more trees! But larger, and with more detail in the branches. As it comes forward towards the light, towards the foreground, everything will become more detailed. This will be a little bit repetitive, but that is the nature of art. So this next stage may seem a little similar to the last one, but once again I'm just adding more black into the mixture. Adding black to that previous mixture, you guessed it, more trees! This forest is full of them! But this time they're larger and with more detail in the branches. And yes, the next level will be produced much like the last, but now we're having a bit more fun. More black, and also dark blue pale in the mix. I'll also take from my previous lighter mix of Ortic Olive, Thornwood, and Underbelly Blue. I know there are a lot of mixes, but seeing is believing, you're just going for a little pale blue greenish tone. Just a murky, undetailed highlight as the trees come closer. More detail will gradually be revealed. And I'm noticing a little conflict of interest, as they call it. As the trees come closer, they become darker. My initial light coats on the ground didn't match up, so I swept down a mix of thornwood and auric olive, then returned at the same tone while the last coat was still drying. Following that, I approached the materializing foreground again with black involved in the previous topography. Now, back to the woods. A few more dark silhouettes were added, and I lifted them by mixing thornwood, auric olive, and unbelly blue in with the silhouette, getting more detailed and sharpened while I work and gradually bringing things into focus. With my backdrop sketched in place, now it is time to get in and sharpen the blade. I'll start with the stream, adding ice yellow and dark blue pale together in diluted layers, making sure the river brightens as it trails away. I added some dark blue pale to thornwood and created a faint root beneath the water. Very nice, a little transparent bit. Following that, I'll go in for some grass as well. Many small strokes from my cold green mixes to create underbrush and algae. Press lightly for the finest lines. Remember, the, the more pressure that you add onto the brush, the wider a line you'll produce. So you're going to be kind of swooping in there, just barely scratching the surface. All right, I'm pretty happy. A bit of rendering on the trees and base with my previous mixes. Make sure to keep some brighter areas in place from that initial airbrushing. You can get lost in those winding limbs, but don't think about all the limbs beneath the surface. It would look even crazier. As tall as every tree gets, it goes as deep. Weird. Now, with all of my paint settling in, I looked to the foreground fauna. A big thanks to Gamer's Grass for this Highland Tuft variety pack. A lot of shorter mosses and longer, kind of deadened grasses to pick from. Very nice. I gave all of those tufts a nice heavy wash of green tone mixed with strong tone, and then I dry brushed it up with another one of those just light bluish sea foamy greener color is. Now for a little fun part. I'm pulling out some Mod Podge Dimensional Magic. It's just a very heavy, glossy gel medium. Laying it down on the surface and then time this out, give it about 10 minutes, take a straw, blow upon the surface, and it will cause the material, the kind of dried over material, will start to ripple as the underside is pushed up from beneath. Do this in a few layers. I'm just going to show you the one, but the end result, I'll do this two or three times. Kind of let these waves build up on themselves. And there you have it, Blubby Blarna Bluss. I'm really happy with this piece. It's cool to work on an old school pewter model. It just, this has always spoken to me. You know, it's something I bought at Gen Con a long, long time ago. It just has such good motion and symmetry, and I'm happy that in a recent kind of foraging expedition, I was, I was looking for roots and everything before the winter time sets in. I just found the perfect curving branch to accent Barnabas and just enhance the motion that's already in the sculpt. And also, this completes another entry for Adepticon. 
Uh, it is my goal next year to enter, there are four painting competitions I'm aware of. I'll just kind of set my mark at that. I, I think there are other ones, but I'll target these four. Golden Demon, the Worthy Painting Competition, Resin Beast, and the P3 Grandmaster Contest, which is what Barnabas will be for. I think this will be a fun experiment entering every single competition and just seeing where I fall. I think it offers proof that like not every competition is meant for every single painter's style, especially with these these brands. You know, they, they have a certain look that they are proud of, which I understand. Um, you know, it's you're proud of the, the things you've made and the look you have in your models. It is marketing to a certain extent. It's also art, though. So I'm going to do it my way. We'll just see how things fall. I'll report back in like six months. But thank you for watching this video. Thank you for your support on Patreon. That means a lot. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And also, don't forget to continually practice painting. You need to remain familiar with this to really improve. Anyways, till the next time we meet again, remain unchained. Wave out.